this is the one jame and you're watching innistrad crimson val spoilers video number three if you'd like to see the other two videos uh, make sure to watch those previous to this one to see the other ones and if you'd like to see more of this type of content and more spoilers to come make sure to click that subscribe button and the like button to see more come but first off we have our first card which is cemetery protector let's go ahead and get started and look at it right now cemetery protector is a flash four mana three four when cemetery protector enters the battlefield exile a card from a graveyard whenever you play a land or cast a spell if there's a card type with the exiled card create a one one white human creature token notably this is a human maybe it's maybe it's a top deck for um a top end for historic humans maybe it finds room in modern humans or something because this card might be really good against control decks um being able to have power and toughness on board your opponent sweeps you and then being able to cast this on end step and then start creating more humans because they just swept your humans you have humans in your your graveyard could be a, a way to really put extra humans on the board uh to keep the game going against control deck also it's a three four for four not that bad it doesn't have any keywords other than flash but um i think this could definitely have a chance uh, maybe in modern or historic more than standard but i still don't think this card's too bad in standard so um it is double white so a little bit harder to cast but um we'll see if it's like kind of like a legion angel card to be a top end in white deck we have a hallowed haunting which is our next one is also two and two white for an enchantment as long as you control seven or more enchantments creatures you control have flying and vigilant seven or more enchantments is a big is, is a big ask it's a tall ask uh but maybe this is designed more for commander uh whenever you cast an enchantment spell create a white spirit cleric token with this creature power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control so you see a little bit of theme in this set with spirits and enchantments um i'm leaning towards this as being more of a commander card but right, maybe you could get it to work in like a historic enchantress deck whenever you cast an enchantment draw a card and you keep drawing more cards and that deck does a really good job at putting enchantments on the battlefield so maybe it finds a home there other than that i'm pretty sure it's for commander other than that we have engulfing tide which is two and two blue sorcery each player chooses a non-land permanent they control return all other non-land permanents to their owner's hand then draw a card for each opponent with more cards in hand than you i have to read that again return all other non-land permanents to their owner's hand then draw a card for each opponent with more cards in hand than you so in constructed you'll draw one card in commander you can draw up to however many cards you're playing with if they all have more cards in hand than you um this kind of reminds me of like a sorcery speed cheaper cyclonic rift but they get to keep a non-land perm uh so still really good in commander and um blue doesn't really have an effect like this in standard right now so it could even be played in blue based decks in standard that aren't playing black or red or sweeper Act Song Pup is a one and a green wolf at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control another wolf or werewolf, put a plus one plus one counter on Pack Song Pup. When Pack Song Pup dies, you gain life equal to its power. Uh, the life gain is a little bit irrelevant, but I like the fact that this card says wolf or werewolf also, so it kind of works with past wolves um, and, and current werewolves. Um, this could be a card that makes dual werewolves actually even better than it is right now. It's kind of unassuming. It's an uncommon, but... Putting multiple plus one plus one counters on this card can make this 2 2 become a 5 5 really fast. Moving on to Biolume Egg. It has two sides. Biolume Egg is a 2 and a blue for a 0 4 defender. When Biolume Egg enters the battlefield, Scry 2 does not nothing, it is an uncommon. Whenever you sacrifice Biolume Egg, return it to the battlefield, transform for its owner's control, and you can get the next, un next end step. So maybe this is going to be like a kind of sideboard and Demir control. Giving Demir control and Egg to play out of the sideboard, just like his Epiphany does. It transforms when you sacrifice it maybe with uh the village rights is currently still in standard um uh deadly dispute is standard skull port merchant in standard there's a lot of ways to sacrifice your things Iolum serpent is a 4-4 and it says sacrifice two islands Iolum serpent can't be blocked this turn so the other side sacrificing two islands is a huge tempo loss but uh, um if you have a way if you have like a lot of either a lot of lands in your deck or you're just I have a three mana that turns three mana 04 that turns into a four four and a four four still pretty good i mean it takes a little bit of work to get there though so i'm gonna say a little bit below average maybe it finds a home but um demir control would be the only place in this that i think this card could fit in other than that it might be a pretty good limited card moving on to 
Torment Grove is a four mana enchantment at the beginning of combat on your turn for a 1 1 counter on target creature. Then, if that creature has toughness six or greater, transform Dormant Grove, transforms into Gnarled Grove Strider, which is a 3 6 vigilant tree folk. Other creatures full of vigilance. If you think about this as a four mana 3 6 vigilance, it's still not even that good. I mean, you do get to put plus one, plus one encounters on creatures you control, but if you're playing a deck like that and constructed, you might as well play Luminarch Aspirant. This would probably be in addition to Lumark Aspirin anyways, but I don't know if you need a card like this. Maybe it's a card maybe in like in the sideboard as a one or two of against other aggressive decks. Giving all of your creatures vigilance is a big deal, but maybe it doesn't even get that far in the game unless there's a gummed up board. So if this card is ever played and constructed, I would think that it's in the sideboard in aggressive mirror. Map. Moving on to Sewer Stalker. It's a three and a blue. For a spirit it can't be blocked while attacking alone okay four mana though three three doesn't even have flying that has disturbed for three and a blue or gutter shortcut it's an enchantment aura you enchant a creature enchanted creature cannot be blocked if it attacks alone if gutter shortcut would be put into a graveyard from anywhere exile it instead so it's a three mana that can't three mana four mana card it can't be blocked if it attacks alone if it dies, it attaches to another creature you control, and that one also gets that ability. I don't think that's very good, but maybe maybe there's a home for it in like uh, in like limited. Making making sure that things are unblockable is very important in limited. So I want to say that is it is it uncommon? So it seems like something that's kind of devised for that. Moving on to Undead Butler is a one and a black for a zombie. Whenever Undead Butler enters the battlefield, mill free. Whenever it dies, you may exile it. If you do return target creature from your graveyard to your hand, this is kind of a one two. Um, doesn't mill when it dies too. Um, maybe this isn't some kind of reanimator deck because when you mill this, or, or, or when you mill you mill free, say you you mill a bomb or something, and then this dies, do you sacrifice it? Then you get a creature to your hand. So, it is value in that way. I wouldn't be surprised if this card found a home in standard. But I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Moving on to Witness the Future is a 3 mana sorcery for 2 and a blue. Choose target player and up to 4 target cards in their graveyard. That player shuffles those cards into the library. Look at the top 4 cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. I realized I went over this in the last video. So if you want me to go over this, make sure to check out the last one. Moving on to Innocent Traveler. Is a, and no, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Make sure if you got this far, make sure to splash smash the like button. Appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. Innocent Traveler is a 4 mana 1 3. It is a human. If the game of your upkeep, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. No one does. Hello, good game. Thank you for the raid. While I'm doing a YouTube video. Alright. Make sure to check out Hello Good Game if you haven't already. Check out his YouTube. You can just type in Hello Good Game in YouTube. He has a bunch of subscribers. Make sure to subscribe to him too. Anyway. If you your upkeep, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. No one does transform Innocent Traveler. Beginning of, so you have to play this, and then you have to go back to your next upkeep without this dying, and it's a 1-3. Mediocre. But, moving on to the next side, which is Malicious Invader with Flying, it gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as an opponent controls a human. I don't know. This card seems kind of bad. Yep, I'm just going to say it's bad. Moving on to Frenetic Devils is a four and a red for a five mana hasty 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Frenetic Devils gets plus two plus two till end of turn. Now this would be really good if it was like three mana and had flying or something. But this thing is five mana. I mean, that's kind of my facial expression right there. It's kind of exactly how I feel about it. Moving on to Rending Flame. The two and a red for an instant. Running Flame deals 5 damage to target creature or Planeswalker. That's a 3 mana instant that deals 5 damage. Okay, Love Struck Beast. If that permanent is a spirit, alright, not Love Struck Beast. Running Flame also deals 2 damage to that permanent's controller. Um, this kind of like gives me some some vibes of the other 3 mana deal 5 from another set that says if it has indestructible, it loses indestructible. But like, 5 damage right now isn't really that relevant. Because everything in standard, at least, is Bolt Span Dragon and Smoldering Egg and things. Four damage. And, like, you already have Demon Bolt anyway. 
if there's anything that really deals five damage you think it has five toughness coming out that you really want to get rid of that becomes a thing in the format maybe you want this card but it gives you some real soul seer vibes the thing about soul seer that was really good is because love struck beast was the format and you needed to get rid of that but this card i don't know if it has a home yet but i i, I think it, it's, it definitely has some uses moving on to valorous stance this is a reprint it's come out in a bunch of different sets Actually, in the pre-con, one of the pre-cons from the Dungeons & Dragons set from the Commander deck, Valorous Dance is one in a white instant. Choose one. Target creature gains indestructible till end of turn and destroy target creature toughness greater. So, nice modal card. Um, it, it, it can go on a sideboard in a meta that both of these are relevant. Right now in standard, it's not relevant, but you never know. I, I do, in general, like cards like this. Moving on to kind, uh, Kindly Ancestor. Is it three mana two through with lifelink and disturb two? Disturb for one and a white. When this dies and goes to the graveyard, you can bring it back for its disturb cost. It comes back as an aura to enchant a creature. Enchanted creature has lifelink. If ancestors embrace will be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So this is the second one that we've seen that comes in as a creature, and then when it dies, it comes back as an aura. I don't really like cards like that because it requires you to have another creature on board, but um this could really like gum up aggro boards. Aggro mirror matches in limited. Moving on to Mind Leech Pool is a one and a black two two. It's a zombie. As exploit, so whenever this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. When Mind Leech Pool ends, like a creature, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. This kind of reminds me of Yarok Spend Lurker from about a year ago in standard. Um, the Yarok Spend Lurker is a double black one one that does the same thing, except for it doesn't exploit. So maybe you can get used out of your uh, Decayed Zombies by casting Mind Leech Pool and, and uh, exiling a card from their hand. This is a 2 and a 2-2 two, two Zombie, which is important because you don't really have to exploit this for it to be playable. Just play this in a Zombie deck on turn 2, and it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. Moving on to Halana and Alana Partner. Um, notably, this card doesn't have Partner for Ender Fan. It is a 2 and a Red-Green, Legendary Creature Human Ranger, First Strike, and Reach. First strike and reach, you don't see that every day. Beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another creature you play. Where X is Solana and Alanda's power, that creature gains haste till end of turn. Now this card is actually, I think, pretty good. I mean, it doesn't give creature plus one plus O like the new werewolf does. Not brand new from this set, but from the previous set, Midnight Hunt. Uh, and that werewolf was already good, giving plus one plus O in haste. And when it's nighttime, it gives plus two plus O haste and trample. This one actually puts counters on a creature at the beginning of combat. Just like the other werewolf does. So this puts two counters. And even if, if you buff this, it gets even more counters and haste. So I mean, it doesn't have that nice one-two punch like Reckless Stormseeker does because you get to play Chariot the next turn and give the Chariot haste. This being four mana doesn't give you that kind of combo. But I think this card's still really, really good. And you should definitely not sleep on this. First Strike and Reach are a big deal too. I mean, I like this card. Moving on to Investigator's Journal. This is a two mana artifact clue. Oh, this actually technically is a clue, which works with things that sacrifice clues. Investigator's Journal enters the battlefield with a number of suspect counters on it equal to the greatest number of creatures of player control. So let's say your opponent has two creatures in this. A two and tap it. Remove a suspect counter from Investigator's Journal. Draw a card. So basically maze mind them. A two and sacrifice Investigator's Journal and draw a card. Oh. So you just use K2 and draw a card, remove a counter. K2 draw a card, remove a suspect counter. And then when you have zero suspect counters, you just K2 and draw a card and sacrifice. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, Maze Blind Tome was played everywhere at the end of the season. Like, people really slept on Maze Blind Tome for a little bit. There was like a month or two where no one played the card. And I think it was Crokies or something that played the card and was like, I think this card's good. And then everyone started playing it. And it was really, really good. Even his, some historic artifact decks play Maze Blind Tome. And this card is similar to that card. I mean, Maze Blind Tome has the advantage to get you to your land drops and try with it instead of drawing things zero mana, which means I think that Maze Blind Tome is a little bit better than this. But this card's similar to Maze Blind Tome, which it definitely is. I think it's really good. It just doesn't work against, like, control mirror match. Your opponent actually has to have a creature. All runs Epiphany, your opponent has two birds on the board, you play this, it gets draw three cards. I kind of like it. Moving on to Toxville the Corrosive, it's a seven mana, seven, seven. Make sure you reanimate this one. Legendary creature Slugor, at the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each, each 
counter you don't control oh it says creature okay the card says creature the text here says counter so at the beginning of each end step put a slime counter on each creature you don't then creatures you don't control get plus one plus one for slime counter on them and that's a blanket effect Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies create a one one black slug creature token for yourself and you can play blue black a blue black and sacrifice a slug to draw a card this card's very interesting i mean it doesn't have any keywords I mean, to be to be fair slugs probably shouldn't have any keywords if anything they should have drawback but the fact that you have to play a blue and sacrifice a slug blue to black means that you could you have you, you basically have to play blue to play this card and there's a lot better reanimate targets in historic there's probably even a better reanimate target in standard but if there is a reanimate target and you want to have fun with this card i think this card could be good in, in that style of deck other than that i don't know if you want to play seven mana for this card. all right lunar rejection one in a blue instant leave for three in a blue you may cast this spell for its complete cost if you do remove the words in square brackets so just one in a blue instant it's return target wolf or werewolf creature to its owner's hand that is bad but you also draw a card but it doesn't say up to what up to one target werewolf wolf or werewolf so if they don't have a wolf or werewolf or you don't have one you just can't cast this card interesting so uh if you pay four mana for this card you return target creature to its owner's hand draw a card so basically just into the royal we already have into the royal in standard right now anyways this came out in zendikar so this card is not good moving on two fearful villager is a three mana two three with menace and daybound no other, no other keywords or anything. Moving on to Fearsome Werewolf, and when it becomes nighttime, it still has Menace and Nightbound, and that's it. It's 4 3. But basically, just a limited card. I don't think this card's terrible and limited. 3 mana 4 3 is very good. Um, but it has to get to that point, and it won't get that get to that point fast enough and construct it. So I'm going to say limited card. Not even that bad and limited, but probably unplayable and construct. Moving on to Vile Spawn Spider. It's a green and a blue creature spider with reach. It's a 2 mana 2 3 reach. Are you kidding me? That's an insane rate. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. Okay, you have my attention. A two green blue, so four mana and tap it and sacrifice the spider. Whoa. Create a one one green insect creature token for each creature in your graveyard. I mean, this card's pretty sweet. Maybe you play like a Soul Tie Reanimator deck or like a four color reanimator deck in in historic if you want that white splash. But if you play like you could probably play the Soul Tie Reanimator card with this. There's also a one mana card, the the mushroom or something. I forgot the name off the top of my head that came out in the last set. That also mills a card at the start of your upkeep or at your end step or something. So like maybe you can pair those two cards together and play some kind of Soul Tie Reanimator deck. And maybe you could also uh play Toxrill, the corrosive, with it. All right, we're seeing the deck form together. All right, that, that seems pretty good, especially since it's a two mana two three already. Moving on to Ovenwald Oddity. I think this is one of the best cards that we've seen so far. It's a four mana four four for two and two green, so it kind of reminds me of like a questing beat. Because this also has trample and haste. Four mana four four, trample and haste. You can pay seven mana to transform it. When it transforms, it turns into Ovenwald Behemoth, which is an eight eight, also has trample and haste. But here's the good part. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have trample and haste. So if you play a mono green commander, you're definitely playing this also because having the other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and trample and haste is great in commander. You can probably even do some kind of kill, kill combo with it. But in constructed, it's also insane because who doesn't want to play a four mana four, four trample haste? And then when you just have the seven mana lying around left over, all your creatures get plus one plus one and trample in haste that's green for you moving on to castic wolf rider 
It is a one red for a one two. Are we finally gonna get a good red one drop? This is a rare, so we'll read the rest of the card to find out. One mana one two menace is a human knight, a two and a red, and tap it and exile three cards from your own graveyard. Create a three two red wolf creature token. I mean, a one mana one two isn't terrible, especially if you're like a mono red deck. We've already revealed Chandra in the last video. Two and a red tap it, exile three cards from your graveyard. You just burn them, burn them, burn them, then exile the three, make a three two. This also doesn't have to be as a sorcery, so you could just leave three mana open and then make a three two on your end step. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I think this card definitely has a chance. I don't know if it's gonna be that good, but it definitely has a chance. Red, red definitely needed a good one drop, and this doesn't have two power. If it had two power, it'd be way too, way too good, I think. This was a one mana two one and had this ability, especially because it has menace. I think it'd be too good. Uh one mana one two with menace still kind of balances the card, especially since it makes three twos. Three twos notably don't have menace. But I think this card's good. Moving on to the last card, Angelic Quartermaster. The five mana three three flyer. When Angelic Quartermaster enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Very good and limited. Um, not really playable and constructed. If you want, if you're playing a deck like this, you probably don't want a five mana uh, Angel Soldier. But uh, other than that, I think this card's very very good and limited. Three three flyer is already good. Um, and then putting one one counters on your other things, especially if your other things are flyers too, is also good. So, anyways. That is all for our new cards as of today. As of the time of recording, this is the third video. If you want to watch some more videos, make sure to click on uh, this video right here or right here, wherever I decide to put it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. If you want to see the other ones and you want to see the more spoilers, check out the last two videos as well. Make sure to subscribe to see future ones, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.